Postal 4 probably had one of the most anticlimactic releases of any game I've seen so far. Its initial release date was in October 2019, and I remember it just kinda came out without any sort of hype buildup, no prior announcements, it just sort of materialized itself out of thin air. Now I had all the time in the world to review this game, especially since everything content-wise for it was done back in November of last year, but as much as it beckoned me to check it out, I held myself back. I saw all the early access reviews and it really looked like I needed so much more time in the oven, so I saved myself the hassle of doing an early access review and then later having to do a full release review. But now that it's out of early access, was it worth waiting 3 years to play it? And an even better question, is it the proper Postal 2 sequel that we all have been waiting for? Eh, uh, maybe? Postal 4 picks up right where Paradise Lost ends. Postal Dude and his pooch champ have been living a nomadic lifestyle with their trailer home traveling the vast Arizona wasteland until it gets stolen after the dude's gas station bathroom break. So he and champ head for the nearby town of Edenston to find their trailer home and to scrounge up any cash. The first bit of gameplay already kicks you into the same familiar format of just doing the dude's errands from Monday to Friday. Like I said in my Paradise Lost review, I'd love if RWS could have done something different or find a way to improve this format. The first thing you do is go around telling people that you're willing to do dirty work for cash, and it's very reminiscent of the notorious petition mission that you do in 2. In fact, unsurprisingly, it even makes a comeback here. However, I'd like to believe that this aspect of the game stayed the same so more focus could have been put into improving the open world. Edenson is huge, so much so that it warranted having a sprint button, mobility scooters, and a fast travel system. The new location kept me entertained for quite some time, especially after spending so many hours wandering through paradise. For the first time in a very long time, I finally had that sense of curiosity that first struck me when I played Postal 2. That almost natural instinct of checking almost every nook and cranny to see if you'll find a crack pipe or a new weapon. It's even made a little better now with the addition of crotchy Cunny and Lobster Larry dolls that are scared about. I believe you get a small cash reward for collecting 10 of them, but I really like them more for how well they just fit into the classic exploration heavy style that the 3D Postal games have been known for. Except for that one. And I guess that one too. There are also these Postal Challenges. They're little random minigames that usually consist of just doing random acts of violence. They usually reward you with money or sometimes even an extra outfit for the dude to wear. All of this might sound really appealing and, like I said, it even was for the first few hours, but I gotta level with you, it's all just smoke and mirrors afterwards. I don't know. After the last bit of Tuesday, I realized how unexciting Edenson is. I could very clearly see that there was a bit of effort into making this map, but it really suffers from being way too big and not interesting enough. This is something that 2 excelled at, and I even praised it in my review. Not having a big map, but having a small map that is jam-packed with places that are worth your time exploring and not a single area feels dull and lifeless. Unlike here where it seems like your starting area has the most character while almost every place outside of it is just filled with buildings that seem void of any sort of personality, buildings that either have almost no collision, and buildings that look like you can by all means walk right into them, but you can't. For a game that's been worked on for the past 3 years, I really would have expected Edenson to, for the most part, be ready for players to run around in. But it's incredibly astonishing how so many areas of the map just scream tech demo energy to me. And Jesus Christ, don't even get me started on how this game runs. Even for RWS, the game company that sort of revels in how amazingly imperfect the Postal series is, 4 is exceptionally buggy. So much so that I can't even joke about it anymore, like it's just infuriating. Admittedly, my PC isn't super top of the line, it's really mid-tier, but with a 1660 Ti I should be able to play this game, right? Especially since I can play games like Ark and GTA 5 with no issues, but nope. What I get out of Postal 4 is 3 minute loading screens and crashes galore, which normally isn't a huge issue for me, but when it takes 6 minutes for me to get back into the game, it gets really annoying to have to put up with like 15 crashes within the span of half an hour. Oh yes, and I absolutely love playing with a constant 30 FPS that dips well below the 15s when the game decides to throw one too many enemies at me, which happens so much more than you'd want it to. And I'm not even going to begin to wonder why my PC can't even seem to reach anywhere near 60 FPS at literally any point in the game. I know RWS is actively trying to fix these issues, but Jesus fucking Christ my guys. You had so much time to fix these issues beforehand, but instead you went on to bloat the game with the most trivial shit. What's more important? Making the amusement park mission playable for more than 5 minutes without it crashing, or adding in a fucking spray can. The funny thing is, there was never a set official release date for this game. RWS decided just out of the blue that 420 of this year was going to be the day Postal 4 comes out of early access, seemingly just because haha 420 is a funny number. And because of that, what we get is a game that as of right now is nowhere close to even reaching full release levels of quality, and that fucking whopping $40 price tag. Yet another topic of controversy that's been going around in the Postal community is that the series has lost its iconic edge. My own take on the subject matter is that Postal 4 is undoubtedly the most accessible game in the series, but I don't think it's as bad as most people make it out to be. It really could have been a lot worse. The game is still quick to take jabs at certain topics that might upset some people, but most of these pale in comparison to blowing up Taliban camps and becoming a sex slave to a bunch of rednecks. Like, the most that 4 does is just poke a little fun at the whole thing behind cultural misappropriation and illegal border hopping, but other than that, there isn't really anything that wooed me. 
The game very much goes for this really cartoony and silly tone. And I get that Postal 2's brand of humor was kind of a product of its time, but seeing how heated the political climate has become just in the past three years, it really feels like somewhat of a missed opportunity that this is the most that they got out of it. And I guess while I'm on this topic, I should also bring up that the new voice for the Postal Dude is John St. John. I saw so many people reject this and it honestly kind of baffled me, like it's John St. John, how can you not like him? Get out now! Come on, it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm not much of a gum chewer. Recently, they did add the option to switch the dude's voice to Cory Cruz, and surprisingly, even the OG Rick Hunter. What's even more surprising is that they even plan to have Zack Ward from the Postal movie to do some lines too. But I ignored all of these just because I really wanted to see how well St. John does the Postal dude, and honestly, his voice quickly just kind of became natural for me. Look, I like the sinister edge that Rick Hunter's voice provides as much as the next person, but it really became hard for me to imagine hearing him during the game's cutscenes and the dude's voice lines. Now, the reason I bring this up is that I suspect that has something to do with the game's more lighthearted shift in tone, and if that's the case, this is definitely one of the better things to come out of that. But going back to the missions, I think an even bigger issue that isn't being brought up enough is just how linear and tame they've become. Most of the time you rarely ever get an option on how you want to approach something, you really just kind of do as you're told. An example of this would be the sewer cleanup job you do on the first day where at one point the only thing you do is just change some light bulbs. Some might say that's low hanging fruit because it's meant to be mundane. Fine, how about the one where you're cleaning giant shit piles off the streets? As far as I'm aware, your only bit of freedom during this mission is either using a fire hose to spray them down or explode them with a grenade. Here's an even better one, literally everything about Friday. You better hope that you've been stockpiling on cash power-ups and ammo because you're gonna fucking need it. The game fully forces you into killing three bosses and an extra one that I won't spoil because I'll, I found it kind of neat, since the one time in like forever RWS has actually kind of given a shit about postal lore. But pardon my French, it's literally horseshit, because you're constantly getting attacked by NPCs on your way to all three of those bosses in this unnecessarily large map, causing you to waste health items like snacks and crack pipes that you could have used during a boss fight. Paradise Lost did the same thing, but it does it better because it gives you the option to kill all the bosses, and it also gives you the option to ignore all of them entirely for the pacifists. Postal 2 was fun because it was a pure sandbox, and not only that, but a really absurd sandbox. The most bland and simple tasks were entertaining because of how much they paved the way for player freedom, and no matter how the player decides to approach them, they will always end in some really chaotic or unexpected way that made them funny. Like your one job could literally just be to drop off a library book, and then the next thing you know, you have to escape a burning library because you've upset a bunch of tree-hugging hippies. I don't care so much that Postal 4 lost its edge, but what really bothers me the most is how so much of it feels so mundane. In all honesty, apart from John St. John being great, the only thing I could really praise this game for is the soundtrack, which is unexpectedly really good and the gunplay, which is just so much better than 2's by a very large margin. Something that always sort of irked me a little bit about 2 was that the guns really lacked a lot of oomph to them. Like how the spaz, despite being as bulky as it is, it feels rather clunky and weak in most cases, but that's been fixed here. The shotgun is just so fucking good. The fluid animations give it that extra punch that it needs, and then blasting it at a helpless NPC just turns them into a mangled bloody mess. This game also probably has one of the best dismemberment and gore effects I've seen. It really adds to the whole experience. Most of the weapons here have been ported in from 2 and Paradise Lost, with the only exception being the melee weapons, which have sadly been reduced to a pretty small number, but it's sort of made up for by the Rattler a chain hook weapon that can decapitate and mutilate low health NPCs that is just ridiculously fun to use. I would have been completely fine with the melee weapon roster if there was at least one heavy blunt weapon like the sledgehammer or baseball bat, but other than that, it's pretty okay. The same goes for the power-ups. You've still got your catnip and energy drink. The only new one here is the vitamin X, which increases your kicking power by like 100. It's really more of a novelty than something that'd help you. It really pains me to say this, giving Postal 4 a grade was a toss-up between C and D, but I've ultimately decided that it should be in D. It could've been a C if all the bugs and optimization issues were ironed out at least a little bit, but the fact that the game runs this poorly out of early access, and it really just seems like it came out just for the sake of 420 and having the release version be 1.0 is just bad. Like, it's nice that RWS is actively trying to fix it, but really this shit just needs so much more time in the fucking oven. It really wasn't worth the 420 joke. And even if they optimize the game, it's already way too late to fix the bigger issues that 4 has. I think I could safely say for a lot of Postal 2 lovers, this is not the sequel that you want. Most of the missions are barely open-ended, the game lacks the edge that made it so lovable and popular in the first place, and yeah, it's almost unplayable. I say this with a heavy heart, Postal 4 isn't worth your time and money. Skip out on this one and continue enjoying 2 or Redux.